John Letourneau here, Division Leader of Industry Engagement and Investment Opportunities for KW Commercial. Thrilled to have you with us. Also thrilled to have Cynthia Lee with us. Cynthia, would you mind introducing yourself? Yes, absolutely. Hi, everybody. I am the Executive Leader of Strategy and Growth for KW Commercial. I'm also the Managing Director in the San Antonio City View office. And I'm also, as well as John, an active practitioner of commercial real estate. So we wear a lot of hats and we're juggling a lot at once. But we're super excited about this relaunch of KW Commercial and getting all of us connected between the commercial and the residential side because the big theme has been this year and especially at Mega Camp, and that is leverage. How do you leverage all of the segments in a market center? And what we have found is that there is so much synergy between commercial and residential. And there's a lot of money in referral fees that can be exchanged. And John and I love to talk about referral, oh, yeah. right? Absolutely. And the third leg of the uh, leadership stool in KW Commercial, Alicia Shepard, who many of you may know, is unfortunately down. She has strep throat. So prayers for quick recovery for her. So send some well wishes to Alicia when you have a quick second. This is part two of a three part series we're doing on integrating commercial into your world, if you will, whether you're residential sort of in between or dedicated commercial. Uh, the first part, just to recap a little bit, we talked about kind of that sort of what's happening with KW Commercial, where we're going, where we're headed, where we're from, where we're headed to. This is really much more about how to how to grow and develop referral business, whether you're on the residential side or commercial side, because one thing we find is that it very often seems to be a one way street, meaning that the commercial folks show up and go, hey, give me everything and off I go. Well, the other part of it is these referrals both work, work both ways. And I think maybe we'll start there and then we can kind of get into some, some conversations and maybe give you guys some, some wording and phrasing that may help in, the, in those conversations. And then talk about some different impacts and things. And we'll wind up with kind of talking about the next steps in our, our third part of the series on, on tying residential and commercial together. So Cynthia, I know you work both residential and commercial real estate. You have a team high performing on both sides of that. How do you see integration between the two as far as sort of a two-way street there? Yeah, absolutely. It's fantastic. So I started out at Keller Williams as a residential agent 10 years ago, and then I was recruited to do commercial real estate at a commercial, at an institutional brokerage. And then I came back to KW um, to do, to practice both residential and commercial because residential deals, you know, as you know, turn so quickly compared to commercial. And so I had to keep up the residential side to pay the bills until I could get my book of business and my sphere of influence going on the commercial side. And now I do 100% commercial real estate. Although I do still pay all the residential dues because I am a curious person and I also look into the multiple listing system and see what's going on. Plus you have a lot of other residential agents from um, you know outside brokerages that post listings in the, well, you know, the MLS system. And so we also like to have access to that. Um, but there is a ton of synergy um, between the two divisions. And, it, and especially for me, I, I do retail. I put tenants and shopping centers all over the country. And so, you know, what the, the phrase is retail follows rooftop. So for me, I have to stay ingrained in the residential world. I have to know what you guys are up to and how we can all collaborate because you got to know where people are, are moving. And the data, even though we have access to some fantastic data and analytical systems, there are also behaviors that the data doesn't necessarily pick up. So you have, it's great to just talk to the residential group about where is, there, where is everybody moving? What are they talking about? Um, but just in terms of the referral aspect of it, one thing that I, I just dawned on me when I left KW to go learn commercial, this was years ago before commercial was like really up and running in, at Keller Williams. I would stand in the meetings at this institutional commercial brokerage and I'd say, wow, these guys have no idea what's going on in the residential world. And, and just the conversations that they had, and I thought there, had, there has to be something to this. And so that's another reason why I came back. And then when I realized that, I mean, my business just went boom and I had the aha of, let me go get to know the residential agents, let them know what I specialize in. And then we can have that two-way, as John mentioned, that two-way referral network. And so the number that we've been throwing out, and honestly, I think the number is actually higher now since the, uh, the new numbers came out for um, year to date, but I've paid out over $200,000 just, just this year alone in um, uh, residential referrals. And those residential agents have referred to a group business just for this one year, that's it. So it's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. I love talking about this. That's awesome. I know you're all you're all frothed up. And, and one thing I've seen is I do a lot of office industrial work right in the Chicago market. And <clears throat> I guess if you look at a million dollar transaction residentially, it's a nice home. 
nice area, right? You, a family has a home, for example. If I sell a million dollar industrial building, 40 workers have a place to go. Well, the CEO, their family, their, their workers all need some place to live now. So if you think also too about that path going two different directions, referral wise, if you're a residential agent, go, hey, you know what, commercial person, let me connect with you. When you're moving companies into and out of these areas, how are you handling the relocation process? What are you doing with their CEO? Where are they living when they're coming in? Are they renting? Are they buying? What are they doing? So keep in mind that that conversation, you know, uh, you can also harvest commercial people as much as commercial people always try to harvest you for leads. Because if you're watching us like, oh, God, two more commercial guys just want all of our leads. Well, of course, sure we do. Why not? Right. We have a whole nationwide group of 2200 of us who would love and appreciate every opportunity we have to keep people in our KW universe. Let's be really clear. Right. Keep them in the family. Sure. But at the same time, they can also point a lot of leads back to you. And that's exactly what we see happen very often in our business. We pay out a ton of referrals. We love giving referrals out because I don't do houses. That's not my world. It's not Cynthia. It's not Alicia's. We we are in our lane. Article 11 of the Code of Ethics says, look, do your job. If you can't offer specialized services without the skill set, don't do it. The other thing I want to approach is, look, from a t time and efficiency standpoint, <clears throat> Right now, a typical residential transaction, NAR stat was 39.8 hours. So just 40 hours of work for a residential transaction from start to finish, okay? And they, they balance that between buy side and sell side. God help buyer's agents, right? And short inventory. But of that 48, 40 hours, if your median fee across the United States is just under 10 grand, it's 8,800 bucks. Break that down into an hourly wage, okay? Break that down into, okay, if I could get 25% of that for 20 minutes of that work, hmm. Boy, well, gee, let me think about that. How much more efficient is my time? So that's a case where referral referral business is where you want to end up. Absolutely. And it could be a little bit uncomfortable maybe having that conversation with your clients like, hi, by the way, who can I who can I pitch that may want to go do this? And it's so transactional. It feels transactional. Maybe you're uncomfortable with that conversation um, and, and it can feel weird. So maybe let's let's see. Maybe you and I can can role play a little bit and, and give some conversations about how to get around that. So yeah. And then and then after that, I'll share an aha that I had in preparation for today's Connect Live. And I told John, I said, I can't believe that after all these years, I never thought about this as my- Oh wait, do that one first. That was really cool. Yeah, no, do that first, then we'll get into this. Yeah, okay. we'll, let's because keep them waiting in suspense for the conversation. All right, no, go ahead. That's true. And plus this also may, may release some of the panic you may be feeling right now about, how am I gonna tell my you know residential client, my seller, my buyer, whatever, about KW Commercial without it looking salesy. And so I said to John, I said, hey, you know what? They should just put it in the listing packet. So whatever your packet is, your buyer rep, pack, whatever it is, just have a, a flyer in there, you know, that just shows the different segments in your market center. You can put commercial right there on the top and it's right there with your business card. You can staple your business card to it and just say, hey, by the way, we offer all of these services. Because again, remember the whole point in creating all these divisions within Keller Lands is it's a one-stop shop. You should, your client should never have to go outside of this organization. Everything they need is right here. So put commercial up at the top. That right there just starts the conversation. You say, hey, by the way, these are the different segments. And KW Commercial, you know, you know, oh, do you do you, you're moving? Oh, do you need to move a business as well? We can help you with that. I mean, it's something so easy. So it doesn't yep. it feels a little bit more organic when it's like your business card is attached to it or paper clipped or whatever it may be. And so um, that was just sort of my that's the easy slam dunk way to go. Oh yeah, that, that that's a genius. That's genius and so simple and so low key that it's it's not as as transactional as you calling them on a random Tuesday like, hey, who do you know that wants to rent office space tomorrow that I can refer to someone that you don't know? Because that's that's kind of a little bit awkward a conversation, right? Let's be honest, right? Um, but that idea of, of that of that material, I think, is really really good, and I love that, Cynthia. And honestly, I've never had anyone do that, so I think it's really a great way to to leverage that. As far as the conversation goes, so let's say you're let, we're gonna we'll, we'll break two com, two sets of conversations. If you're a commercial agent, we'll talk to you first, then we'll talk about residential agents. So if you're a commercial agent, you're going, hey, how do I get my market center to love, care, and feed me, right? Like a lost puppy or a lost cat. Um, the first thing you need to do is be trustworthy, right? Honor the leads that are given to you. And I'm gonna say this to both residential and commercial people. The leads that both of you flesh out of your market center, maybe 30% of those are actual closable will close leads in the next foreseeable future. About 30%, 70% are not gonna happen. And that's not saying due to lack of skill or anything, it's just timing and market and it's, it, they're just not gonna happen. I've watched this happen nationwide. 30% is on average where they go. Some are 20, some are 40%. 30% of those leads are what are gonna actually close. So there is certainly a winnowing process that will happen. So even if you go, why well, I turned over this great lead and then nothing happened. 
cool, six more of those and then you get a deal. So sure. don't get too discouraged, right? And, and be ready for a little bit of time on that. And that's just the nature of it. Just as if everyone comes to you and says, hey, I wanna buy a house tomorrow. You think everybody who ever told you that bought a house with you? Oh God, no. Um, so be aware of that. But so be trustworthy is the first part, honor the leads that come to you. The second part is, you know, how do you then, how do you start beating the bushes and raise these up? So as a commercial agent, understand that the residential agents are a lead gen source. They are a client just as much as the client who wants to rent space who contacts Cynthia. So they are your client. So how do you, how do you take care of them? Make them feel loved. First off, you need to market them effectively. One of our agents in our group, Christian Lee, does a great job. He has a cool one-page flyer that he he calls and hands out and emails to all the agents. Like he goes to all the business meetings, goes, hey, here's who I am. Here's what I do in my market center. I specialize in this area. I've lived here my whole life. I'm a total expert in here. I can help your people make their decisions locally. Let's do this. And he really feeds and, and takes care of the local agents. He does little mixer things. He buys drinks. He does, he does a great job of taking care of them. And all of a sudden, Guess what happened? He has a pipeline. They, they're, they're hungry to feed him opportunities, but more importantly, they're hungry to ask for the opportunity because he gave them the conversations to have, like Cynthia talked about the one sheet and the listing thing. So you have that. Now, the other part of it is that our commercial transactions are a lot more complicated in many ways. And part of the, the death factor, if you will, why so many don't is there's so many more approval factors that happen. You have financing and appraisal and zoning and the village board and all these other things that have to get in alignment. So it's not that, that the commercial people are schmucks that only 30 percent close. There's a lot of other factors that work for and against you in transactions. Well, maybe there's some schmucks, not in KW, though. We're all perfect. Uh, right, Cynthia? Um, sure. We're all great. I'm totally kidding on that front. Um, so at that point, you know, understand what kind of what your loss rate is and just have that as a realistic expectation going in. All right. Step one. So if you are a commercial agent and you're, and you're looking at harvesting those relationships, give the people who are on the residential side something to call about. Give them a conversation point that's not transactional. Wait, what? Informational, not transactional. Right. So if Cynthia is a, a residential agent, I would call her and just say, as a conversation might go, hey, Cynthia, this is John, the commercial director here at, at uh, KW Commercial in Naperville. And I know you're doing a ton of residential. You're doing some really cool luxury listings. I love this one, two, three Main Street you just sold. Have you ever asked those people what they're doing with their business or what's happening with their company or why they're moving or how they're moving or influencing their companies? Yeah, of course. That's like the first question that I ask is, you know, well, why are you moving? Why are you relocating and where are you going? Cool. Have you ever referred, have thought about bringing that back into the KW world, right? No, so take I that back. Yeah, I'm just so focused on being out there, you know, at the listing appointment, just making sure I can even get the listing to begin with. But I just says the thought just doesn't cross my mind. I just commercial just doesn't even sync with me. I can't even think about it. Cool. Well, let's start you thinking about it. Okay. So here's what we can do. And we had, we had the value add part of it, right? And that's very transactional. And you're like, okay, cool. I closed on that. I asked that. Here's where we're at. Now, the other cool part is be like, well, no, I've never really asked them that. Well, that's cool. One neat thing you can do is whenever you're on a listing appointment, having a conversation, be like, oh, so, you know, where do you work? You know, you go your Ford call, right? You know, family, occupation, resource streams, you know, during that occupation, write that down. Hello, write that down. If you're not taking notes, whether here, and I know everyone, no one forgets anything, write it down and go back to the commercial people and be like, hey, you know, I talked to these folks, they have this big thing and here's the companies they work for, they're thinking of moving. Well, that's cool. The commercial folks may be able to go in through the side door and approach the company through a direct route so you don't feel as uncomfortable that you maybe had to pitch them and be like, hey, can I turn you over to the, to the, to the, you know, the administrations of our commercial folks? Be like, hey, I think they may be doing this. Well, cool, that may give the commercial people a shot to get to get at that business another way. And they'd still honor that relationship, okay? Yeah, I'm gonna add to that too as well. Go. So just going back to my residential days and, and walking homes for listing appointments or just even being with the client. I mean, you have a lot of idle time as well. And you just oh, have yeah. some, you know, chit chat time. Hey, where are you moving? Oh yeah, but what do you do? You know, they won't even think twice about you asking those questions. Think about it this oh, way. Yeah. You, you as a residential agent, spend a lot of time getting to know them as people, getting to know the name of their pets, when their birthday is, you know, all those types of things. When the commercial, our family is the institution, it's the business. And yep. so you got to think in those lines, you could just, just inquire to ask just a few more questions that seem very natural, um, but it's really not that big of a deal where they're going to go, what are they, why is she asking all these questions? It's not, it's not that big of a deal. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a great pickup is go peel back a few more layers of that onion. And, and part of a conversation that we, that I've used very effectively is this, that like, oh, wow, you guys are renting office or industrial or your, whatever space use it is. 
Oh, that's cool. You know, our commercial team offers uh, free valuations on the property and we'll help, they'll help you understand if your rent is too high, too low, kind of where you are, where you stack up in the marketplace. Be happy to have them reach out and contact you about understanding where you are in the rental marketplace. Well, I don't know where we are. How would I know that? And these people have no idea. Trust me, unless you study the commercial market, you have no idea. And they go, well, I don't know. I don't know. But you know what? That plants a seed. And if you start planting that little seed, that's called a rent survey. If you, the generic rent survey. Now, you didn't ask them to transact. You didn't ask them to buy or sell a thing. What you came from was contribution, not transaction. Saying, hey, you know what? Let's help your company make sure that they're doing the right thing, that they're being fiscally responsible. Can we do that for you? We'd love that opportunity because it'll help you guys make a better decision about where you relocate to or from or if you expand or contract. And that conversation comes real natural, especially when you're in housing, because you're going, wow, you need four bedrooms instead of three. Well, yeah, I'm going to be working from home more. Really? Well, if I told you I'm going to be working from home more, Cynthia, what conversation might you have with me about my office space? Exactly. You need to have your office space leased out. You need representation to have it leased out. Exactly. What's your company doing with that space? Right. Mm -hmm. exactly. We can help you work with your landlord to get that space reconfigured. We can work with your landlords to help, or your ownership to help understand your options for you. We can help give you so many other things that you may not have access to. You may not even be aware is out there because a lot of owners are hammered by COVID. They don't know the full panoply of resources that a commercial agent can, can bring to them. A lot of residential agents don't either, just as I don't know a lot of the stuff the residential people can do in their world either. So this yeah. isn't this is that connection point. Go ahead, Cynthia. I'm going to jump in there too. Something else is don't assume that they already have representation. So Absolutely. It, it's been interesting. Some of the clientele that we picked up from residential referrals, I'm talking big, big names, big names, mm -hmm. group companies that you'd be surprised that they didn't have representation. And why is that? It's because they got burned. This is nine times out of 10, at least on my end and what I do that they got burned by a commercial broker from somewhere else and they had a bad taste in their mouth. And so they just said, you know, we're just going to go about this ourselves. Yeah, we'll just do it ourselves. And, yep. And then you have the residential agent there forming that relationship and trust and whatnot. And then they invite us into the picture and then boom, we take it off. We take it, run, take it and run with it. And as John mentioned, you have to honor, you have to honor that referral. And so like we give it our all. And I'll tell you, I've gotten some referrals that, and in fact, I just had one that we worked on it for a year and a half. And because of the market fluctuations, it was a law firm and blah, 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 you know, it's it ended up not working out for now. He had to put it on hold. It's a year and a half that we spent working our tails off, but that was because it, we were honoring that referral, whether it made the deal made or not. And guess what? That agent, of course, now will continue to refer business, business to us. So so you have to make sure you, you do it from that end as well. But yeah, don't ever assume that they have representation. And even if they do, they may not be happy with it or they may not know that they should be unhappy with it. Does that make sense? That's another important one too. Exactly. You can plant some cool landmines in those conversations. Be like, well, yeah, we're, we're happy to give you a rent survey and help your, help your clients and help your company understand where they're at in the marketplace. Oh, that sounds cool. Why? And then let us, let us have that conversation. Leverage us for that because we can really take that conversation to a whole new level. The other thing is like you talked about time. So patience, I'm going to give you another thing on how you want to build a long term serious income business in referrals is patience. So we closed a deal um, is it July or August, August uh, for a medical center. I was uh, the referral check on that was just under 20 grand to that agent who referred it to us to our group. We started working with them in August of 19. OK, so had to be patient. But you know what? What was his total time? It was a family relationship. He introduced us via email. He sat and waited, right? I send periodic updates. Here's where we're at. Here's where we're at. Deal came together. Deal washed out. Deal came together. We went through three or four properties. It was a long process because there were there was a lot of challenges to the market. At the same time, we got it closed, but that was simply that process. So be aware you have to be patient too on either side of that. If you're on the residential side, like I want to build it. I need it now. I need it now. Now and commercial rarely come together well. <laughs> Is what I can and, tell you. And I think too, especially if you are in a market center where you don't have, let's just say your commercial division is, is somewhat new or maybe only have one person, just make sure that you also go in there and set expectations with them and say, I need communication on a monthly basis or when something significant happens. So like we usually will tell uh, the referee, we'll say, hey, we will reach out to you when something significant happens. Because for us in retail, I mean, it just the first month is, searching for properties, touring, everything like that. Nothing really happens. And we can, we can submit seven letters of intent and nothing still has happened. And you know, right. it, until we get through that LOI stage, it was kind of like your option stage, your option period. 
and get into that lease now that there's something significant. And so, so we so just know that that the commercial associate, it's not necessarily they're pushing you off, it's just there may not be anything to report, but if you need that, that confirmation on a weekly basis, whatever it is, make sure to set that expectation up front so they are aware that you need to be communicated with. Correct. And what I would also say is let your client drive the communication strategy more than you. Don't over, don't over, over control it because you'll, you can break the transaction that way. I need to report every week on this. Commercial transactions move at a different pace. And if you try to come in with that, we need an hourly update on things. It's, it's not going to bode well for the transaction, uh, just oh. as a heads up. And something else I thought of too, John, because this actually just happened recently um, with another associate in the commercial division here in San Antonio that a residential agent had a great lead. They ended up actually getting the listing um, and the residential agent wanted to tag along and go with our commercial associate. And, and this person was pushing our commercial person saying thing that they've got to know an answer today. And, and so the associate came to me and said, how do I handle this? And I said, well, first of all, uh, you can't be told on a Friday that now you have to meet on a Saturday about this. You don't have the comps for it because you have to get in touch with an appraiser. It's a very different process and it can take a long time. And the thing is, if you push, that commercial person to get the results, to get answers, to show up with comps, show up with paperwork, then there may be some inaccuracies in there. We, right. we have to take our time. We don't have access readily, or we don't have um, information readily available to us, especially when it comes to comps. So in Texas, it's a non-disclosure non state. Non-disclosure state, oh my gosh. Yeah, you guys struggle. We have no access. And so we have to have relationships with appraisers to get comps and we have to ask brokers and whatnot. I mean, it's, it's a, it is a tedious process. And so just be aware of that too, that don't make, don't tell your, your client, your seller, your buyer, oh yeah, I'll have a commercial person. We'll have comps here. We'll do whatever within a day. No, it's, hey, I'm going to get in touch with our commercial expert and then they will contact you and, and let them pace it. You know, from that point, at least from the initial, the initial um, part of it. So don't set unrealistic expectations with the, with the client. With the client, absolutely. Um, and the other part is too, if you don't have a commercial presence in your office, the cool thing is through command, you can search the entire KW commercial roster, find agents in your area who are doing commercial. You can search them by tag if they've tagged themselves. If you have a question on, hey, who in my area does office or retail, you can always email us, the admin at admin at kwcommercial.com. That's Justin Champ. <clears throat> excuse me, and Justin can definitely connect you with someone who's certainly willing to work with you, who'll honor your relationship and all that. Now, the other cool thing, the coolest thing I think to me is I, I worked as a non-realtor broker for many years. And I can tell you when you're outside and you are competitors, not collaborators, it's a cutthroat world. And if you've been at a brokerage where that culture of collaboration is not strong, you know how, just how unhealthy it really is. So the cool thing when you have a relationship like we have with our, our, our seven market centers is our commercial group goes, Hey, Cynthia, thanks for referring us. You know, we appreciate you letting us, you know, help out. Remember when, when we're done, we go back into our little cave and we do our commercial stuff. You go talk to your client because you're the face of it. At the end of it, we tell your clients, Hey, remember if you need anything in real estate, call Cynthia, we're out and we pull back. Yep. So the key is we stay behind the agent, not in front of them. We're not here to supplant your relationship and I'm not going to skate you and sell their house or do any of that stuff. So building that relationship has to come with that trust, but also that clear expectation early on. What do I do and what don't I do? So if you are building that, make sure you are in your lanes where you need to be. Okay. Um, so you can search through command on that stuff. Be aware of that. Um, commercially, farm your agents, make a form up, treat them to you know some appetizers, go to your business meetings, share some market stats. But every stat that you share and every piece of information you give. Now, this is what's really cool. If you're doing a 33 touch, whatever model system, whatever model of contact system you have for your residential database, let's say a residential agent, you're, you're reaching out. You don't know how many people are telling your people to change their smoke detector batteries, to set your clock forward an hour and these catchy little messages, right? You're all doing the same things. And people are like, whatever, whatever. I can tell you that your compatriots from competing firms are not saying, hey, by the way, how healthy is your business in their current rental space? Would you like to understand how you how you stack up with your rent? Are you overpaying for your property taxes? Your mortgage seems too high in your commercial property. Like you come at them with stuff like that. It's a very different contact. And I can tell you no one else is making it to them. So if you want a differentiator besides, hey, set your clock back, fall back an hour. Yeah, yeah, great. That's cool. And I'm not saying it's not valid, but you want a different way to contact them. That's going to help drive business, add money to your bottom line. That's a really cool way to add that referral message and even quarterly approach these people because these moves get planned six months, a year, year and a half in advance before anything happens. Because if I'm in a lease and I know I have to not, I'm not going to exercise my option to renew it. I usually have to give anywhere from six months to a year of notice. Then I have to start looking for my new one. 
secure it, build it out and move everybody. That can be a two year process. So you're going, well, they're not moving now. They're just talking to me. They might move in a year. You know why they might move in a year? They don't know if they're going to exercise their option. But okay. if you get in early enough, you can have a chance to build that referral business. That reminds me, one of the um, one of the vendors that we would always go after, copy machine people. Mm -hmm. copy oh yeah, nice. Yeah, when you see the contract get pulled and added, yeah, oh yeah. Center, that's who you got to talk to and ask them mm -hmm. how long is the contract for. Oh, they're not renewing the contract, and you know you usually can find out from them. That's oh, a good one. I like that. Yeah, they're either moving or they're just going to a different company. But yeah, copy machine people, anyone that supplies something that the market center has to or the business that is an awesome one i yeah. love that that i have not i've, I've heard do like the pizza people follow they track the number of pizzas that could deliver to the pentagon to know when we're going to strike foreign countries like that's how they knew when the iraq was going to go from desert shield to desert storm uh in 91 is they tracked the amount of pizzas that were delivered to the pentagon and they were like yep they're going to attack and sure enough it was on and something else too is that that cool. also another assumption here don't assume that just because somebody somebody is not the leader of a company that they're not I mean, yes they may An not influencer. be the decision maker but they could be the gatekeeper so Correct. a great example is is that a residential agent referred a gatekeeper to me who was the executive assistant to the executive team for one of the largest medical groups here in san antonio i've now done i think four of their offices and made almost a million dollars just from that one client and it was the assistant she happened to know mm -hmm. her. And so you don't, you never know who people know. And so don't make those assumptions. It's just a matter of having conversations. That's it. Just, hey, well, what do you do? Oh, really? Oh, you guys are moving? You know, to be your friend, to be your neighbor. Exactly, exactly. And I know we're winding down on time, but I will throw one other factor out there. NAR stat right now, the National Association of Realtors stat is that people own a home for 9.8 years between sales right now. It's probably actually longer because of COVID that hasn't adjusted yet. So if you sell someone a house, you hang out for 9.8 years, you may or may not get another transaction. 83% of people say they would use the same realtor again that they closed with. 13% of people do. That 70% drop off is absolutely mostly on the broker's fault, on the agent's fault. Let's be real, right? You're like, well, now nah, they ain't transacting for a while. They didn't have any cousins or uncles at the closing table that I could pitch them for. And you might put them in a slow drip system, but they're lower priority. You look past them to the next hot thing that's going on. What I'll tell you commercially is if I put someone in a place on a three-year lease, I know three years in a day from the day I put them in that space, they're going to go up, down, or sideways. They're getting bigger, smaller, or they're staying. So I know that I'm populating future transactions. So when you start referring out commercial business and you can start building referrals that are going to keep repeating and coming back to you and back to you, you're building an incredible pipeline that transacts a lot more often and generally at a slightly higher dollar level than what you are residentially. So think about what you're building and be very purposeful in how you're building that referral basis that way, because you can build some incredible wealth on that end of it as, as you start thinking about how to hand that off to commercial people and vice versa. And make sure that you also set that expectation as well, because a lot ah, of guys imagine that. multiple, as John mentioned, multiple transactions and so, right. and that commercial broker or agent or associate may say, well, I paid you on the first deal. I don't need to pay you on the second one. So make sure that it's laid out of what Correct. percentage and so what i do is i do i tear it down so the first mm -hmm. transactions tw first two transactions generally i pay 25 percent. if i do a third deal with that same client then i take it down to about 15 percent. and then the fourth one 10 percent, and then it's, you're done after that like if now they're mine fully for commercial so make sure you have that laid out that groundwork laid out because you never know and you do not want to be put in that situation where you're going oh. i thought i was going to get paid my friend told me that they just did a second location but the broker the commercial person never told me that Right. So don't, don't get stuck in that situation. Now I can talk all day. John, I love talking about this. I know these are fun. These are fun conversations and it's a great way. Hopefully you've all picked up something. I know we're getting to the bottom here, uh, the, the bottom of the hour. Uh, yeah, so I will say we have a third panel coming up and this wait, is going to be a cool one. One question. Wait, one question. Oh, wait. Okay. Um, I'm new to that. KW. I just wanted to know, can we check the listings available for commercial? And lastly, can we leverage between US and Canada? Uh, the listings are iffy right now. That tech is being revised. They're, they're not great right now because there's not full integration of that. So unfortunately not globally yet, that's in process. Uh, as far as the US and Canada, the integration there is not also very well done at this point, only because of the national laws and transactional stuff and license and all that. So it is a very different universe, unfortunately, for right now there. So 0 for 2, I'm sorry. I wish I had better news on that one. 
Um, we can talk more about that too in the next. The next yeah, session. we can do that. And the next panel is it's going to be a panel on the synergy between residential and commercial in a market center and how you can use and integrate that. And that's going to tie back more into some of the systems we're putting in place. So at January one, you'll see some really cool rollouts from KWC on how you can integrate it into your market center. Or even if you're a residential agent going, we don't have it here. How do I get it? We'll be able to help give you some really, really cool steps for your OPs and TLs to get in on that. And tomorrow, something cool is happening. That's right. So we're having a mastermind tomorrow on tenant representation. So if you are interested in joining commercial, and again, you can do residential and be a member of commercial at the same time. And um, you may decide you like commercial more or residential or who knows, but either way, you can come and sample us with our mastermind. It's at 1 p.m. Central time. And um, if you want to register, go to admin at kwcommercial.com. Just email Justin and his team, and they would be happy to send you the registration link. Um, but it's about tenant rep and putting um, tenants in you know, office buildings retail centers, industrial warehouse, flex space, that type of thing. And what amazing person might be leading that conversation? Hello, uh, Cynthia. Oh, the queen of tenant representation herself. Cynthia will be there. Yeah. So it's going to be an awesome conversation. So I think that uh, wraps us up for today. Thank you for joining us for this Connect Live session and look forward to seeing you on our third panel. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.